It's the day after Thanksgiving, and typically that means sounds like these. Malls across America are teeming with holiday shoppers, buying everything from purses to Pokemon. I think every year I end up spending more each Christmas, and since I have a few more dollars in the bank, I probably will spend even more this year, too. And lately, American consumers have been shopping with even more vigor than usual. I think everybody's in a good mood by the looks of the mall. It looks like it's full of people. As we approach the once dreaded date of Y2K, the U.S. economy continues its seemingly inexorable expansion. Thanks to spirited consumer spending, the economy barreled ahead in the third quarter at a growth rate of 5.5 percent. This pushed the gross domestic product, the total output of goods and services, to $8.9 trillion. The quarter was the best for growth since the end of last year. And today's announcement that personal income shot up at the highest rate in five and a half years comes as the nation's unemployment rate remained near a 30-year low. It now stands at 4.1 percent. Meanwhile, initial jobless claims fell 13,000 last week, suggesting increased demand for workers. No surprise, then, that the University of Michigan's Consumer Confidence Index was up at 107.2, a 4% rise from mid-October. The only slight shadow in the picture appears to be inflation, which, according to one Commerce Department measure, is up at a rate of 1.7% for the first three quarters of this year, compared to 1.1% for the three quarters previous in 1998. Presumably, to keep that inflation in check and slow the economy somewhat, the Federal Reserve last week raised interest rates for the third time this year. $54. But consumers seem undeterred. In the current fourth quarter, forecasters see economic growth in the 4 to 5 percent range, most of it driven, as usual, by consumer spending. This is considerably higher than the generally agreed upon speed limit for the economy, a 3 percent growth rate. For years, the Fed has been thought to believe the economy can grow no faster without sparking worrisome inflation. But the bells are ringing, and on Wall Street, supposedly a predictor of future economic performance, stock prices have continued to rise. And today, the technology-laden NASDAQ index scaled a new peak. It's now up 57 percent for the year. To get down to further specifics, make some broader generalizations, and see how the economy is faring across the country, we're now joined by Daniel Mitchell, a professor at the Anderson School of Management at UCLA. He's director of the school's forecasting project. Ray Rosen is a senior economist and officer at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Morton Marcus is director of the Indiana Business Research Center and economist with the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University. And Gary Shoesmith is director of the Center for Economic Studies at Wake Forest University. Welcome to you all. Uh, let's start with a quick survey. What's happening in your region, Morton Marcus? What's selling in the Midwest and who's buying? Well, our concern has to be with manufacturing across the country. Uh, the figures that you've cited neglect the fact that there's been a decline in the rate of growth of motor vehicles and parts, which are very important to Michigan and Indiana and Ohio. We're concerned about the fact that residential investment is down in the third quarter from where it had been. Gary Shoesmith, uh, you're in yes. the South. Uh, what's happening there? Do you have the same kinds of concerns? No, the picture is really quite different here. Uh, the Southeast economy is still very robust, uh, both in terms of employment growth and income growth. The Southeast is still leading uh, the nation as a whole. Uh, unemployment is uh, roughly one-half percent lower than the national average. We have some, uh, some very strong states that lead the way, Florida and Georgia. Uh, and after that, South Carolina and to a lesser degree, North Carolina and Tennessee. So we have a pretty, uh, pretty strong engine down here. Uh, and of course in Florida it's tourism, but uh, a lot of people don't realize that Florida is uh, roughly one-third of the southeast economy, uh, both in terms of the overall level of employment and also in terms of growth. In fact, it's driving uh, this part of the country. Uh, Daniel Mitchell, uh, the far west, uh, what's happening out there? Well, we do have some uh, decline in manufacturing. We're still suffering from the uh, end of the Cold War and the decline in aerospace and all of that. But uh, here in California, for example, the construction industry is booming. Uh, we have this very large business services sector, which includes everything from janitoring, uh, janitorial, janitorial services to computer uh, consultants and so on. That's been booming along. Uh, a number of areas uh, of retail uh, have been doing very well. So overall, it's a very powerful positive picture. Uh, Ray Rosen, finally, Northeast. Uh, what's going on in New York, New Jersey? Uh, 
Well, we're, in the we're entire island. Northeast, <laughs> let's take it up to Vermont, New Hampshire. Yes, we, that'd be fine. I'm right in it. We've got a vibrant economy, and it's being driven by what's happening on Wall Street in New York City. If you think of New York City as a state-sized economy, it'd be the third largest in the Northeast, and its the employment growth is running close to 2.5%. It's fantastic. It's being driven by business and financial services, and those are the kind of services that are driving job growth right across the Northeast. So you're not, you're not worried when you hear Morton Marcus talk, nothing like that happening in the Northeast, as far as you can see? Well, he's worried about manufacturing, and out here, manufacturing is certainly declining. It's declined since World War II because it can't compete with the jobs and the production that we get from business and financial services. So we're really shoving it out the door to make way for new growth. If you go up the west, uh, the west side of New York City uh, along uh, the Manhattan um, sideline there, you see dot-com after dot-com being established, and they're driving out what used to be uh, meat processing plants. Uh, that's a good replacement as far as I'm concerned. What's the role of uh, savings and debt in all this? We read well, about a savings rate of zero, for example, and yet I mean, is that, not that yet, is that what's driving this? Well, very clearly consumers are spending a great deal of money on debt. Uh, we now have consumers spending 3% of all of their purchases, all of their outlays uh, on interest. Uh, interest payments have risen twice as fast as spending in general by consumers. And if we have still more increases in interest rates, we're likely to see them hit consumer durable goods. Y you said at some point that you thought this was a uh, problematic scenario. I was wondering if you think this has been a year of living dangerously. I think we've been, we've been pushing it very hard. I don't know how many more SUVs we can really put onto the road in America. <laughs> Daniel Mitchell, do you agree? Do you, do you think that there is a, a sense in which we might be living, uh, as um, Morton Marcus suggests, beyond our means here and that uh, we'll come a cropper? Well, the, uh, the stock market has clearly been a driver for the consumer, both directly for those people who have stock and feel a lot wealthier, and for the many people who have gotten jobs and more overtime hours and all of that uh, indirectly. Uh, so if we were to have a break in the stock market, and particularly if it was a severe and sustained break, not just the kind of blip down and up that we had about a year and a half ago, that would cl clearly uh, impact negatively on consumer spending and have a general negative effect on the economy. On the other hand, uh, we have to uh, weigh the whole technology uh, uh, growth, and, uh, and that's been very, very strong. Uh, the dot-coms that uh, were talked about in, in New York are certainly out here in, uh, in California on the West Coast, and uh, it's really a kind of uh, in, uh, industrial revolution of, of a new kind. Ray Rosen, should the Fed, you're on the Fed after all, you work for the Fed, should the Fed be thinking about the stock market? I remember Alan Greenspan warning about irrational exuberance, seemed to be thinking about it then. The stock Dow Jones was at about 6,500 at the time. He certainly didn't talk it down, as the phrase was at, the, at that well, time. Speaking for myself, but not for the Fed, which is <laughs> what we're asked to do if we get a question like this, right. of course anyone would be worried about a bubble economy comparable to what happened in Japan. We're not trying to bring the economy to a halt. What we'd like to see is a deceleration. Your worst say, case scenario is a little bit, we could go fa faster growth, but a little bit of inflation. Just quickly around the last just a few seconds. Morton Marcus, your worst case scenario? that we have continued increases in petroleum prices and that it affects the economy as it did in 73 and again in 79. And then you have a downward spiral as a That's result. Right. Daniel Mitchell? Uh, I think uh, the recovery in the world economy, the Asian economy, the European economies, uh, that growth uh, could uh, put pressure on not only oil prices but uh, all kinds of prices that could feed into inflation at home. And finally, Gary Schusman. Yes, I think we're having uh, increased pricing pressure coming from both the demand side from consumers and also from the supply side uh, on the part of wages. The real key there is, is productivity growth, as, as, as has already been mentioned. Thank you all very much.